Lawyers of Reddit, what was the least defendable case ever brought to you? I had a client who won just shy of a 7 figure settlement in a personal injury case. She then dropped into my office to ask me to file a fee dispute against the attorney who represented her in the personal injury action. That attorney took a little over $260,000 on this case. If you're doing the math at home, this guy took a 27% fee on the type of case where 40% fees are common. Did a freaking fantastic job because the woman got nearly a million dollars. And then she turned around and tried to sue him to recover any of his fees. I rejected the case out of hand and then got an ethics complaint for discriminating against her. Sounds like she would have sued you for your fees if you had taken the case. A woman wanted me to sue her previous lawyer for charging her a lot of money but producing almost no work to justify his fees. She gave me what she told me was the lawyer's total work product, a page printed off the internet for which she said she was charged thousands of dollars for legal advice. She had already brought a claim via my jurisdiction's disciplinary body for lawyers. She had lost and wanted to bring an appeal. The judgment kept referring to documents that I hadn't seen. I pushed her to give me everything and she came in with multiple files full of immaculate legal work that totally justified the fees she was fighting. We told her to get lost but she wasted a lot of my time before we realized she was full of crap. A friend of mine was in a case where a guy was accused for graffiti vandalism, among other things, and the conversation with the judge went like this. Judge, sir, did you make this graffiti? Defendant, no, I did not. J, but it has your signature at the end. D, yes, an artist has to sign his work. Case closed. Worked in house for a famous character company with a large fan base. A few crazies a year call in. A guy called in claiming that we stole characters that he created and demanded to be compensated. I calmly asked them to provide more details so I can determine whether this has any merit to it. He states he designed the characters himself and gave it to the well known actual creator when he was a kid. And the creator pawned them off as his own. I asked him when he was born. And it's a good 20 years after these characters were actually created. I ask him to explain this. And he pivots and says he also created some other well-known famous characters and brands. Characters and brands that are not owned by my company. I kindly ask that if he wants to pursue anything to send us something in writing and hang up. I figured if he wasn't going to do some really basic research on his own claim. He wasn't going to spend any time to write it up. Never heard from him again. This sounds like a guy I know that tried to claim that he created Toothless as a character two years after the first HTTYD movie came out. He also tried to tell me that he was an alien I'm talking he 100% believed that himself and went on and on about how he was waiting for them to take him home. My dad had a client who was on trial for being a felon in possession of firearms, possession of stolen property, burglary, and distribution of narcotics. Guy had multiple pictures of himself on Facebook holding guns, drugs, and cash, and had videos of himself both breaking into someone's house and stealing a gun as well as selling crack on several occasions. Despite my dad basically telling the genius he was going to prison either way, and to plead out for a reduced sentence, dude still pleaded not guilty. We still occasionally joke that the guy clearly wasn't competent to stand trial by virtue of being so dumb. I don't understand people's fascination for posting their crimes on Facebook, morons. Not my client, but my dad, and the hospital he worked at, was sued by a gentleman after he saved his wife's life. Details. Patient is pregnant with 8th child and miscarries. The fetus is removed but the patient starts bleeding uncontrollably. The only option available is a hysterectomy. It was either that, or she dies right there on the table. My dad gets called in to do the surgery. Performs it successfully. Hooray. The patient's husband is quite devout and beyond pee that his wife can't have any more kids. So he sued the hospital. No firm would represent him, and he ended up bringing proceedings himself. Went all the way to trial and he lost hard. Probably my client charged with statutory rape, multiple counts, who impregnated his high school sweetheart's daughter after having sex with said daughter from the ages of 13-15. He was 35 at the time of the birth. DNA in the form of a baby is strong evidence for the state. She lived on a large riverfront block. She had a jetty for a boat. A large tree fell over in storm and landed mostly in the water and making it difficult to moor her boat. 
She wanted to sue the government for not taking away her fallen tree. Not a lawyer. I was a jailer and used to pull double duty as a bailiff. A guy stole a pickup truck and was later captured passed out behind the wheel parked on a sidewalk surrounded by a ludicrous amount of drugs and guns. His legal defense. He elected to represent himself because he wasn't done being stupid double jeopardy. You can't charge me for theft, drugs, and felon in possession of a weapon because I've already been convicted all of those charges before. In short, during his jury trial he admitted to doing it but explained with a smug grin. That since he had already done time for the same charges from another case before that he could not be prosecuted for them ever again. This is not how double jeopardy works folks. He's in prison for 20 years now. If he'd taken legal counsel he could have easily cut a deal for 5. I represented a tree trimming company that went to the wrong address and cut down all the mature trees in that yard. The right address was 100 North XXXX Street. And the company went to 100 South XXXX Street and just went straight at it, hacking away. I still have no idea why the insurance company didn't just settle that one presuit. Our legal advice is salivating. Not me but my dad's lawyer. My dad's ex-wife decided that they weren't getting on with divorce proceedings fast enough and decided to make a move while my dad was at work and we were all at school. So she locked my little brother in my room, the only one they didn't touch, and called over 40 plus people to take whatever she thought was hers. So pretty much everything, including furniture, old music and pictures from before she was even around. I show up to the house to pick up my little brother and it's empty. I don't know what she thought was gonna happen when she possessed many things that were obviously my dad's, like pictures of just me and him, or the computer that he bought through his job at Dell. My dad sued her three times and won every time. She just got caught laundering money from the summer camp she worked at and my old boy scout troop, that her son is, was, now in. Frick her. Interestingly enough my dad just remarried to her district attorney. Dad in his 60s hadn't been paying child support for decades and he owed more than $60k for two kids who were adults now. He was basically living at a farm in the middle of nowhere so no one could find him. He worked for cash so the money could not be garnished from anywhere. He then came into an inheritance, which was deposited in his bank account and promptly confiscated by family maintenance. He wanted it back. Yes, well, we all have wants, Simon. A lady was sacked by a large company. They had caught her embezzling money to fund a gambling habit. They had clear evidence the embezzling had occurred, and she did not deny it. She sued the company for $300,000 for unfair dismissal. My sister's firm represented the company against this woman. The case was so easy, the firm gave it to my sister as her first ever solo attempt. My sister screwed it up. Badly. Not only did she lose, the court awarded the woman $500,000 instead of the $300,000 she asked for. In the end it was a good career move. The partners all knew her name and dropped into her office, one by one, to offer their sympathy. Worked in family law in California for like two years before deciding I'd hang myself if I didn't change career paths. In CA, the obligation to pay spousal support, alimony, ends when the recipient begins cohabitation with a new romantic partner. A guy who was positively getting fricks in half in his monthly payments came to the office and said he was aware of the rule about cohabitation and wanted me to argue his point in court. You see, his ex was a narcissist, she was in love with, and had begun cohabitation, with herself. Her presence in her apartment should count the same as if there were a romantic partner there. He was bordering on begging me to take his money. I refused. Not a lawyer, but I feel bad for YNW Melly's lawyer. Dude wrote three songs about murdering someone. Murdered two people in his vehicle. Drove them to the hospital and said it was a drive-by. The shell casings of the bullets were in his car. Cell phone GPS pings him at the murder scene. He said he'd murder them in text messages and the dude pleads not guilty. I imagine that if you take a job like that you probably have to disconnect emotionally and just play the part, as if it were a speech and debate exercise. Then, after your client of course loses, you go cash your paycheck. A lady didn't pay her general contractor upwards of $20k after the job was finished because of a dozen or so minor complaints, like he was slow. Told her she should pay and we could help her with her complaints. 
Else he will probably be successful getting a lien on her home. She didn't pay. He got a lien on her home. Even offered to help her stash the funds in escrow pending their dispute. And would prevent a lien in the meantime. Nope. My best guess is that she didn't have the money and was attempting a tantrum to get out of it. This was my 1L internship literally the first person to ever approach me in a legal capacity. Later that fall, she showed up to my school and was demanding my info from the front office, who handled it well and I never saw her. She blames me for losing her home. I told you to pay or you'd lose your home. You didn't pay and lost your home. Surprise Pikachu face. My brother's a lawyer. His client took a backhoe, dug up a standalone ATM and scooped it onto a flatbed truck. Then, and only then noticed a security camera nearby filming everything. He got some black spray paint out of his truck, went up 2 inches away, really nice view of his face, and sprayed the camera lens. He insisted on pleading not guilty. This demonstrates the importance of coming up with a complete project plan at the start rather than winging it. It's much easier to fix these things in PowerPoint than it is later on. I read a patent and told my bosses it was both invalid and infringed by no one. It had 10 means for elements and each patent claimed that no one would practice. All that weren't supported in the written description. Partners, my bosses, new to patent litigation, sued on the patent anyway using young, inexperienced, unseasoned attorneys in the firm. Three years later after billing the client millions of dollars, every defendant won by proving each claim either not infringed or invalid. Then my employer appealed and billed the client another a slowed of money, with a young attorney in charge of the appeal that didn't understand the underlying issues on any level because he was a former teacher instead of patent attorney. It was such a bad patent no one would settle at any point in the case. My bosses were blood sucking trolls I quit for these and similar, parallel reasons. The firm finally imploded. Not a lawyer, but I am a trades union representative. At the last company I worked, we had a great set of workers. My colleague was the head representative for the union at the time, whereas I was still learning to be a representative. Anyway we had this electrician who'd worked at the company for 25 plus years. Really well respected but his views are a little out there. My colleague had just got him back to work after a case of inappropriate workplace behavior, kissing an office member of staff on the cheek where he was suspended for 6 months whilst investigations went ahead, he came back with a final written warning, meaning one more incident and he was sacked, all his pension, benefits, gone. Two days after he came back, me and my colleague got asked to come into a meeting regarding this employee, got in the meeting, senior HR and the boss of the company are sat inside, they lay out new allegations. So we have had a report that when working in a property, you went into the house when there was only a 14 year old girl and then proceeded to talk to her about sex, condoms and other obscene matters we won't mention. So we're just like whoa, whoa wait, what the heck we need to talk to our colleague and find out what's happened here and give him advice. Nope, before we even had a chance to do that, the guy spoke up and went yeah I did, nothing wrong with that, she's 14, she knows how to use a condom. She's from the area. That's all they know how to do. They have sex and get pregnant by 16. So I'm just talking to her about what she knows. Dude was in his late 50s he should know better. Both me and my colleague just stunned like why the frick did he just say that? Anyway, he got suspended and asked us to defend him because he says he did nothing wrong. We got the case file and evidence through. Realized that there was actually frick all we could do. He dug his grave dug it a day after he returned to work. He lost everything. His house. Pension. Everything. No one would employ him as he was deemed too risky to take on, knowing they could have a potential sex scandal should he do it again. I'm a paralegal. Local guy in his 20s decides to go rob his dealer. He got the wrong apartment. When the college girl opened the door he shot her in the face and fled. She lay there for hours just out of reach of her cell phone and listened to it ring while her mom called. She lived, a neighbor found her, now she's paralyzed from the neck down, and her face is very deformed. This is a small town. During the trial the jury was shown just how strung out on drugs he was, and how he even bragged to a few friends that he shot someone. That's pretty dang hard to defend. He got 40 something years. The girl that drove him to and from the apartment was also given jail time. That poor freaking woman. 
I can't help but think about the fact that she has to live with knowing that her life has been completely destroyed because of something that she had nothing at all to do with. I would be bitter as all heck. It's like a hundred way tie for first place. Spoiler alert. They had the drugs on them. Less frequently. It was a gun. And yeah, let's just say the I have a permit defense for the latter was not something we had to worry about around those parts. You'll be surprised how quickly cases become at least theoretically defensible as soon as you establish any distance whatsoever between the client and the contraband. Though, in fact, I'd say there's a systematic bias in juries, and lots of inconsistency in the relevant case law, about how difficult it is, and or ought to be, to prove possession beyond a reasonable doubt. It is, of course, in favor of the prosecution. Guy wanted me to sue the city because the city took too long to bust his neighbor's illegal garbage disposal business. Guy claimed his neighbor's house had mice because of the garbage truck that was parked there when it wasn't hauling garbage. He said the neighbor's mice were causing his house to have mice, reducing the value of his house so he couldn't sell it. I asked him how long he had been trying to sell his house. He said he wasn't trying to sell it yet. I asked him what he had done about the mice so far. He said he called the city to have them get rid of the mice but the city refused. I asked when he reported the neighbor's illegal garbage disposal business. He told me he never reported it. The city just towed the garbage truck after the neighbor was arrested for some unrelated crime. DUI. I asked the guy how he knew all this, and he said the neighbor and him were partners in the illegal garbage disposal business and his neighbor's old lady told him about the arrest and the towed garbage truck. An independent mortgage broker from a small town on the east coast. One day, he just up and left without notifying his clients. Fast forward a few months later and one of his former clients discovers significant mistakes in her residential mortgage paperwork that caused massive issues with the bank, costing thousands in legal fees to rectify. Naturally she wants to recover damages. Only the broker can't be found. Office is boarded up for non-payment of rent. His house is up for sale. And nobody knows where he went. The only indication of his whereabouts was his Facebook profile. He was swimming with dolphins somewhere sunny with his teenage daughter which infuriated the plaintiff. Fortunately he paid his insurance up front and it hadn't expired, so he would be defended by us through the insurer. When I finally got in touch with him after two months, he explained that he'd lost all interest in the profession about a year ago. Since then he took on clients or helped existing ones, but with basically zero financial background checks and absolutely no regard for the structure or timing of the transaction. He was rubber stamping everyone and everything. His work was so shoddy and his file management so poor that we had basically nothing to go on. He was dead to rights, and he didn't care at all. Then one day he declared bankruptcy, signed the house over to a trustee, and got a short term visa to live in Australia where his daughter was studying. We settled that one quickly as he had no intention of returning for trial, and we'd probably never be paid. We once had a client skip bail and run. I looked him up on FB and he had posted a photo of the bond paperwork and a bunch of $20 bills. The post reads something like man frick the law and my bondsman. Can't nobody tell me crap. Blah blah. Typical hood crap. We live in BFE Texas. Dude is not a gangster. Anyways. He didn't realize that the only reason we bonded him was because we were going to represent him. Withdrew on the bond in the case. In the motion to withdraw we quoted his FB post and attached a copy of it as exhibit A when we filed it. Not a lawyer but I was a witness to an assault a few years back. Had to get up in the box and be questioned. Terrifying. Anyway, it was on a night out, hanging around outside a club. A female friend of mine took exception to some dude grabbing her butt. Both start slinging insults at each other until the guy decides to sling his fist at her face instead. Right in the presence of three police officers, who witnessed the whole thing and arrested him immediately. The guy for some reason denied it all, despite being caught literally red handed by the popo and it had to be resolved in court. How would you even argue on his behalf? I have a relative who's a lawyer. She worked for a hospital on a wrongful life case that was pretty miserable. Plaintiff had given birth to a baby with very severe congenital deformities. Plaintiff sued every health professional she saw while pregnant claiming that if they had told her about the deformities, 
she would have aborted. A quick look at medical records shows that the plaintiff never really pursued prenatal care. She went to her local emergency room very early in her pregnancy to get a pregnancy test, apparently common in impoverished communities. And she returned to that same ED a month later with abdominal pain. The ED doc did an ultrasound on her belly and determined the fetus was not in distress. But he did not do a thorough exam because he wanted to figure out where the belly pain was coming from. Not do an organ scan like an OB would. But she sued that hospital. Then she was arrested for check fraud and saw a physician in jail. But she didn't tell that doc about her pregnancy. So he didn't do an ultrasound at all. But she sued whoever provides that health care. The jail. Maybe. Just a sad. Sad case that the hospital won handily. The real loser is that poor kid colon. I represent condo and homeowners associations. One of my condo association clients wanted to evict some tenants because they were fat. I am not even joking. Now, the law does, in some cases, allow the association to evict non-owner tenants. This is very fact specific, however, I spent a long time trying to elicit from my client exactly what these tenants were doing that warranted eviction. Client, well, they are just disgusting people, they are fat. Penge 1028, exasperated, you can't evict someone because they're fat, we did not end up filing suit. I got sued for $50,000 by a man who claimed his arm was broken when he sideswiped my car at 2am. We both got a DUI, and he was also cited for going the wrong way on the freeway. My attorney determined that the guy had been to the doctor the day before the accident and had received treatments to his broken arm. He was charged with filing a false police report, and some other charges. Ended up doing 90 days in county lockup. I paid my fine, did the required procedure to get my license back, and learned my lesson. Obligatory not a lawyer, but my dad was. My dad was a patent and trademark attorney about 10 years ago and worked for a pharmaceutical company. The owner of the company adopted the slogan just do it, not knowing that the trademark belonged to Nike. When the owner found out that the trademark belonged to one of the biggest companies in the world, rather than change the slogan and avoid a lawsuit, he calls up Nike and expresses how funny he thinks it is that they have the same slogan. My dad got them to settle the case and the catchphrase was later changed. I had a guy want to sue a popular chain restaurant because he had a heart attack there. Couldn't say what the restaurant did wrong but it was clearly their fault since it happened in their restaurant. No thanks. Luckily, I was on the other side of one of these ridiculous cases. I live in an area where liquor licenses are extremely, extremely valuable commodities. They can be transferred from one person to another, which is often easier than convincing a municipality to issue you a new one for your new bar restaurant. My client was opening up a new restaurant and found some wackadoo who had a liquor license that he was not using. I believe his bar previously folded. He agreed to sell his license to my client for about $250,000. The contract had a minor notice provision, something like you have to send notice of whatever in 7 days. My client's former lawyer dropped the ball and sent it in 10 days. Now, the wackadoo received full payment but decided that because this minor notice provision was breached, he was entitled to keep both the license and the money. There is a doctrine of law called material breach of contract, which, in a nutshell, means you can only sue for breach of contract if the breach materially impacts your contract rights. For example, if my client had failed to pay for the license, that would be a material breach of contract. But getting a notice document 3 days late, when full payment had already been made, yes, it is a technical breach of the contract, but no court in the United States of America would deem that to be a material breach, and certainly no court will let the wackadoo keep the license and the money. So we sued the wackadoo, who represented himself. He fought okay for a pro se, but the judge of course ruled against him because his position was crazy. Wackadoo kept the money and my client got the license. I'm not a lawyer, but my mother was in a lawsuit against her roommate and the roommate lost horribly. My mother the nice and kind woman that she was heard a family member's mother was going to be homeless. She was a bit crazy, which later turns to really crazy, and wasn't allowed to be on the premises of her daughter's apartment complex for legal reasons. She takes her and gives her the spare room. My mother worked as a hospice worker and stayed 4 nights a week at her client's home. She told her new roommate, 
who had nothing but a verbal consent to stay in her home so no legal paperwork, no bills under her name nothing but whatever random mail was sent to the roommate, was told that she could stay, live there rent and bill free as long as she cared for the pets and house while my mom worked. This lady had changed locks, done hard drugs, boob betrayed the house, stole items, the list goes on but I'll cut it here to save a read. Well my mother tells her she needs to leave and gives her over a month's notice to vacate her property. She did not, and after dozens of 911 calls and a legal notice to vacate after several trips to the local sheriff's office for help. As the roommate had squatter's rights we managed to get her out and move on to court as she had assaulted several of us between telling her to leave, and her leaving. She represents herself and my mother. Myself and my then girlfriend with my mother's lawyer arrive. The lady was off at first speaking and she tried to lay out this massive defense I have a copy of the lease, as well as several other documents making it illegal to remove me from this home, as well I want to file charges against them for B&E, as well as verbal assault. The judge looks to us and we give them our statements, as well as all the videos we had recorded of us entering, and company fronting the woman on this issue, and she was the only one screaming, cursing, and so on. As well my mother and I, along with the home's actual owner provide the actual lease, I signed on as a co-signer though I did not live in the house, and all of which failed to have the roommate's signature on it. The charges on us were dropped almost immediately, she was charged with squatting, forging of legal documents, slander and a few others I can't recall off had. We were granted restraining orders against her, as well she had to pay all the fines of the court and spend just over a year in jail. Sorry for a long one but I hope someone enjoyed reading this. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.